Yellowstone National Park and here along the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone near Tower Fall we've got a great exposure uh, revealing a really interesting uh, geologic story. So we've got the Yellowstone River down here at the bottom um, <clears throat> and then a chunk of the Absarica Volcanics, the 50 million year old volcanic rocks composed of uh, debris flows, uh, lahar deposits, some lavas, some tufts, some uh, volcanic sandstones. And then right here we have <clears throat> a prominent ledge, a cliff with columns in it of basalt. So this, this is a two million year old uh, basaltic lava flow that's capping the Absarica Volcanics through here. Um, then above that we have a slope forming unit, this lighter colored material that at least in the top part up here has what looks to be uh, maybe some stream gravels and some big clasts and then another basalt with uh, columns in it. This is 1.3 million years ago and then the uppermost ridge up here along the skyline is capped with uh, glacial material, glacial till um, from the last ice age. So <clears throat> really spectacular uh, scene and some of the deposits and features we see here uh, along the Yellowstone River. Uh, this is the Yellowstone River flowing to the north. Um, if we kind of come around to this side, we actually have some of the same units here beautifully preserved in this, this big road cut here. And so um, we're going to walk across the road here and see what we can see here. So we can actually see the basal contact of the basalt right through here. Uh, and it doesn't look like much, but if we come down here just a bit, we can actually see exposed some of these stream gravels. So we can see some of these sandy, quartz-rich cobbles um, in these stream gravels that were, I don't know, I don't know if uh, presumably maybe the Yellowstone River, that there are deposits of that. It could be some other river system as well, I'm not sure. Um, then we have the sort of a sandy interval just above it. So this could represent um, fluctuations in a flood. So we deposit the big material first when the energy of the flood is high and there's a lot more uh, velocity and uh, volume of water moving downstream. And then as the flood wanes a little bit, we get these, this sandy material here, this sort of sandstone. But then we can see a really sharp contact right here <coughs> between the sands and these basalts. Um, and so it should make sense that these lava flows would inundate the streams because the lava is going to go to the lowest point in any environment, in any location. And a lot of times the lowest point is some uh, area occupied by water. Could be a lake, could be a river, stream, something like that. Um, the other thing we can see here uh, is kind of a color change with the basalt. It's a little discolored here and that's because as the lava is hitting the water in this stream, uh, it's quickly quenching the lava, cooling it quite quickly. So sometimes you get a little bit darker zone in here. Um, sometimes it's altered, kind of this brownish yellow material in here. It's called pelagonite. Um, so you get an alteration product. If you look up in the basalt here, it looks more or less pretty uniform, uh, very dense. Um, this stuff's really hard through here. Um, but the other thing we can see looking along the base of the lava flow are some vesicles. So some of these gas bubbles that are forming right at the base of the lava flow, which doesn't seem to make much sense because you've got the weight of this, you know, 100 foot lava on top of it. And so the lava itself shouldn't be allowing these vesicles to form. But when you remember that this lava is going into water, then we would get these vesicles uh, forming as the water flashes to steam and there's enough vapor, water vapor there that it's able to overcome the pressure of the overlying lava and form these little uh, vesicles here at the bottom. What's interesting is they're, they're still pretty flattened so there's still quite a bit of pressure coming on down on them uh, from above. So this is the 1.3 million year old flow that we saw across the way 
um, forming the upper columnar unit. And on this side, uh, the columns are pretty well displayed. You can see they're kind of more big and massive along the base. Uh, and then there's a bit of a contact right here where they become a little bit more, uh, a little thinner. So they're not nearly as thick as they were. They form this big overhanging uh, sort of curtain of rock, which is pretty impressive. Um, and of course, columnar joints form when a lava flow is cooling uniformly from, from its base to its top, wherever that is, way up there. And if it's cooling more or less uniformly, then as it contracts, those fractures can form through going um, sets of fractures. They can actually link up from top to bottom and form uh, these columns. So it could be that um, there was a change in the cooling rate. Could be the interaction with water that made this sort of pronounced change right about here. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, but nonetheless, you get some of these really spectacular columns um, just above the road here uh, near Tower Fall. Uh, we'll go back across the road for one more look at <coughs> the canyon and some of the geology there. But you can see that same flow continues all the way uh, to the south there along the road. Um, yeah, and then we've got uh, some of the basalt that's just sort of fallen off, just forming this slope here. Um, I suspect, without knowing, that this lumpy terrain in here could be slide deposits or collapses of these columns from above down onto this real hummocky slope right here, because we should have, the geology more or less should match up, so we should be getting some of the stream gravels on this side. Uh, but it looks like some of this, the lava flows on this side, have collapsed down uh, into the canyon there. So, and then we have some of the hydrothermal uh, deposits and some of the springs along the lower part of the Yellowstone River that's sort of bleaching out some of the rock there, um, making it difficult for the plants to grow. I believe there's some springs along there. So there's some probably hot ground, maybe some acidic groundwater moving through as well that makes it a little bit difficult. So we'll head to the next stop, but a great little view here uh, at Yellowstone National Park near the Tower Fall area of the big columns. And we found the little cobbles at the bottom, some of the stream gravels. So there you go. Another just great place here in Yellowstone National Park.